but Swiss Re, which is one of the biggest mm -hmm. life insurance companies in Europe, have copied. I'm going to call it our tree because all yeah. the ideas were yours. I just, <laughs> I just made the graphics, yeah. you know. And uh, Swiss Re have started sending it to their clients. Well, John and the team there, John, are, are, yeah, I, yeah. I just could not be happier with with his, particularly his efforts, and I admire yeah. what he's trying to do because if we can get insurers who start embracing this view, then then we're set. Yeah. Because they will then help dictate, in part, that might be an indelicate way of saying it, the clinical per, uh, perspective. And then if clinicians are be, are enabled to do this, if, it, if a clinician is enabled to measure insulin and they even hear about it from an insurer, they're going to do it. Yeah. It's not like a clinician is some malicious figure who doesn't yep. want to include this marker. They either don't know about it, which is very common yep. as a clinical marker of importance here, or two, even if they do know, they know that there's no way they can feasibly fit it within the system, whether it's the U.S. system, the NHS, Switzerland, it doesn't matter. It can. There are barriers to simply getting that hormone measured. Yeah. But if an insurer is able to step in and start doing that, that starts to change the game. There's barriers, there's time. Because even though we know the five measurements, six measurements that you need that can indicate whether you're insulin resistant, you've then got to translate that in a 10-minute appointment yep. in the GP. Yep. Uh, uh, when Ben work. says cl clinician, we, we think GP in the UK, general yeah. practitioner. Uh, and also lack of knowledge. I've, I've said this a few times, and I'm not having a go at doctors. I love doctors. Most of my friends are doctors. I'll tell you, it becomes oh. a vicious cycle. Um, there's, no, there's no other way to view it. The moment you start putting a type 2 diabetic on insulin therapy, you are accelerating their demise. You are making them get fatter more quickly, and you are driving chronic disease more quickly. They literally die faster. The risk of cardiovascular death, death from heart disease goes up by three times. It's in the book. Yep. You're literally killing I'll them faster. I showed my dad the page. But it create, the vicious cycle <laughs> is now you are on the chronic too high, too low cycle that it typically only plagues a type 1 diabetic. Yeah. Mind you, only when they're eating a high-carb diet yeah. because we give them this asinine advice, which is eat whatever you want, eat all the carbs you want, just cover it with insulin. If you have been diagnosed with diabetes, type 1 or type 2, the one thing they have in common is the high glucose. They're exact opposites when it comes to insulin, whereas a type 1 diabetic is an insufficiency of insulin. A type 2 diabetic is an excess. It's not working. And so you've heard me use the analogy before, but for those who haven't, giving a type 2 diabetic insulin is like giving an alcoholic another glass of wine. You're giving the person more of the very thing that's driving the problem. Yeah. If giving an alcoholic another glass of wine isn't going to solve the alcoholism, so too is giving a type 2 diabetic an insulin injection not going to help the disease. You're continuing it. You're feeding the beast. But that puts the person on this roller coaster of highs and lows in glucose, and they're, giving, they're given the, the advice to make sure you eat carbs to cover your insulin injection. No. No, they have too much insulin in the first place. Diabetes is a disease of poorly metabolizing glucose. Yep. Why on earth, to put it very politely and diplomatic, diplomatically, where would, we, would we tell them to eat more glucose? That's the one thing they're struggling with. Yep. The disease isn't defined by high blood triglycerides. Thus, where, why should there be a fear of fat? The disease isn't defined by high blood levels of amino acids. Thus, why should there be a fear of protein? It is defined by elevated glucose. Why then does that continue to be the nutrient that is most embraced by conventional dietetic dogma? Yeah. It, there's, it, it defies all logic. Yeah. And there must be some other reason yeah. that only leads us into very cynical, dark <laughs> yeah. pathways and conclusions, <laughs> invested interests. <laughs>